Good morning! Happy Sunday po sa ating lahat. Isang mapagpala ang araw kong muli. Puri ng Panginoon sa isang araw na muli ay pan, uh, pagkakataon na muli ay binigyan niya tayo. Nung pagkakataon na tayo ay muling makapaglingkod at makapagpuri sa kanya ang dahilang pangalan. Hindi man po tayo magkakasama in person but we are one in spirit. Amen. Uh, kamusta po ang lahat? Bagamat alam po natin na sa mga oras na ito ay marami pa rin naka-quarantine dahil nga po sa virus na ito. Tama po yan. Huwag po natin spread ang virus ba dahil ito po ay gawa lamang ng kaaway. Ang spread po natin, bangkos ay ang spread po natin ay ang kabutihan at ang kadakilaan ng ating Diyos na pinaglinikuran na tunay na mas makapangyarihan sa lahat. Amen. Ang sabi nga po sa Biblia, kung maayaw kayo ipalaganap ang mabuting balita. Ang mabuting balita po ang kanyang salita. Si Jesus. Uh, nice ko lamang po i-share sa inyo ang uh, Mateo verse 11, uh, chapter 11 verse 28 to 30. Sabi po dito, Lumapit kayo sa akin, kayong lahat na nahihirapan at nabibigat ang lubha sa inyong pasanin, at kayo'y bibigyan ko ng kapahingahan. Pasanin ninyo ang aking pamatok at sundin ninyo ang aking mga itinuturo sapagkat ako'y maamo at mapagpakumbabang loob. Matatagpuan ninyo sa akin ang kapahingahan sapagkat madaling dalhin ang aking pamatok at magaan ang pasanin ibinibigay ko sa inyo. Puri ng salita ng Diyos. Tayo po'y manalangin. Aming amang Diyos, pinalat makapangyarihan sa lahat. Panginoon, maraming salamat Lord sa mga oras na ito. Lord, maraming salamat po sa iyong mga pangako na kung kami ay lalapit sa iyo ay may kapahingahan. Panginoon, pinagkakatiwala po namin sa iyo ang aming buhay. Ngayon din, Lord, kumilos ka sa aming buhay at mangusap sa bawat isa. Abutin mo po, Panginoon, ang lahat ng iyong mapagpalang kamay. Nagtitiwala po kami, Panginoon, sa iyong mga pangako. Kayo po ay laging tapat sa iyong pangako na hindi nagbabago. Panginoon muli, maraming maraming salamat po dinadakila at niluluwalhati po namin ang iyong pangalan. Ito pang aming dalangin sa tanging pangalan lamang ng iyong anong Jesus. Amen. Amen. Saan man po kayo naroon ay sama-sama po tayong umawit ng may kagalakan sa ating Panginoon. Kaya dahil tunay nga po na kay Jesus lamang natin matatagpuan ang kapahingahan, kapayapaan at kagalakan. Sama-sama tayong umawit ng may kagalakan. Higay po natin ang ating pinakamatas na papuloy sa ating Diyos. Amen. Dapat po natin ang ating kamay.
morning, Living Spring Community Church. Welcome back. As we continue in the spirit of worship, please allow me to read from the book of Psalm, chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. Again, that's the book of Psalm, chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. And I will be reading it in the Good News Translation. And the word of the Lord says, You, Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. How wonderful are your gifts to me. How good they are. I praise the Lord because he guides me and in the night my conscience warns me. I am always aware of the Lord's presence. He is near and nothing can shake me. And so I am thankful and glad and I feel completely secure because you protect me from the power of death. I have served you faithfully and you will not abandon me to the world of the dead. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. God bless the readings of his words. As we close with, his, with this next song, may I please encourage each one of you to open your heart and lean in closer to Jesus right now. Let the Holy Spirit fill us and pull us towards the Lord. Just like the psalmist in chapter 16, let's utter these words, Lord, I need you. No matter where we are right now in our life, no matter what we've done in life, we are never too far to be reached by him. And if you feel that he's calling, don't fight it. Let's not hesitate. Let us just come to him as we are with all that we have. Let Jesus have them so he can give us what he has for us today. Overflowing grace and mercy.
our dear Heavenly Father, our dear Jesus, set the tone of our hearts before you right now. Clenched our hearts into your grasp and never let it go. We cry out, I need you, Lord. Not just in one part, but in all aspects of our lives. You are all that we have and our past, present and future are in your hands. How great is it that you meet me today in your courts, not with judgment, but with wonderful gifts of love and forgiveness. We praise you today, Lord, and let it reach the heavens as your presence come down and touches earth. We are forever thankful for filling in the gaps and where we lack every day in our lives. May we begin to feel redeemed, reached and renewed by you as we encounter you today in this worship experience. We surrender and yield to your Lordship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory. Church, you may now be seated and let us prepare our hearts, mind, and soul for the word of the Lord. God bless you. Good morning. Living Spring Community Church is here with you. Welcoming you today, January the 23rd, 2022. I'm coming to you from Bowie, Maryland. Again, this is Ernie Bartolome. And we also wish everyone who is being reached by this uh, virtual presentation, wherever you are, my deeper prayer is that may God find you and may God bless you in your own situation. Today we are going to continue the series that we have started on the theme called Expand. We're talking about expansion. I believe this is the right word and uh, that's what God uh, has spoken to me before 2021 departed. And so uh, today being the fourth Sunday of the month, the first month of 2022, I'd like to discuss with you a title called The Gospel Call Spread Out. The Gospel Call Spread Out. And before we continue on with this message, I'd like to read some scripture passages wherein we're going to uh, get the deduction from in this message and it's found in the book of acts the eighth chapter and we will be reading quite a longer verses here but i trust that you are with me i trust that you are also in tune with your scriptures with your bible so if you have your bibles ready right now would you please turn with me to the book of acts chapter 8 and we will be reading verses 48, 4 to 8, and then we will be jumping from verses 26 to 40. I trust the Lord that this would be a very exciting Bible reading because, you know, the life of a mission, the work of an evangelist, and the work of the gospel is quite interesting in all angles. And so would you please join me? And I'll be reading... Uh, the said passages. I'll start with verse 4. So those who were scattered went on their way preaching the message of the good news. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds paid attention with one mind to what Philip said as they heard and saw the signs he was performing. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now, jumping on verse 26, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert road. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, and high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit told Philip, go and join the chariot. When Philip ran up to it, 
he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? Verse 31, How can I? He said, Unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch replied to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about? Himself or another person? So Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning from that scripture. As they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, Phil, uh, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he ordered the chariot to stop. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him any longer, but he went on his way rejoicing. Philip appeared in Azotus, and he was traveling and evangelizing all the towns until he came to Caesarea. May God bless the reading of his word. May I ask everyone to please quiet ourselves. Wherever you are, may I invite you to stand with me and as we pray and come to the Lord. Holy Father, we thank you for the scriptures you have allowed us to read and you also will allow us to learn from. In the same way, the same spirit who led, who led this man, Philip, is the same Spirit who is telling the whole church of the Lord Jesus Christ to do likewise. Because this is indeed the call for us to spread out. This, this is nothing but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow us, Holy Spirit, that as we learn from this narrative, we too will become just like Philip in the story, ready obedient and willing to obey you and go out into the field and preach and share the gospel of Christ to whomever you are going to lead us to. Today, there might be people who are also looking the same thing. And it is my prayer, Father, do not allow them to turn off their gadgets. Instead, let them stay further and listen to the message that is also for them and that they too will come to know you as their Lord and Savior and then they too will also receive a challenge to become heralds of the Word of God just like Philip in our story. Holy Spirit be with us all wherever we are would you please bless us mightily and give us your power and the authority that comes with it, with our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us from our sins, cleanse us from anything impure, and lead us in the way you would like us to go, because the life in the gospel call is worthwhile. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the people, let me ask to say and shout a resounding Amen. 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 And so, before we continue on, let me just state to you the background. The background of chapter 8 is obviously you would notice that God is using the persecution of the church to spread the gospel. You know what happened in chapter 7? Uh, prior to chapter 8, you know what happened there is that 
the first Christian martyr, martyr named uh, Stephen was stoned to death. And I believe that marks the persecution of the church during the time. I believe Satan is trying to stop the gospel by bringing in this persecution to the people of the Lord. But I believe too that his efforts have the exact opposite effect. Actually, in chapter 8, here, Philip, who is one of the seven chosen to serve and assist the disciples, who is full of spirit, shows himself to be a, a good model Christian missionary. If you would like to get a close glimpse of what happened and how was Philip was chosen among uh, the seven, including Stephen, uh, please read that account in Acts chapter 6. And here in chapter 8, you would notice that he occupies the whole chapter here. And the Holy Spirit is using him this time to bring the gospel message. Because I believe as the Lord brings in this persecution in the church, the church will be ready anywhere to anyone at any time. And this calls for an evangelistic effort for the church to follow the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given to the church. So I would like to discuss with you in three parts, answering the question, how did the gospel spread? How did it happen? You probably have asked. And in this question, I'd like to bring to you three things that is so clear really happened in the text that we have read. Okay, bear with me. Number one, I believe God brings the gospel somewhere where people are. That's God's primary intention to bring the message of salvation somewhere as long as there are people. And in chapter 8, God moves the church evangelistic mission out of Jerusalem. And this time it moved to Samaria. Did you hear that? The mission is moving out. It started in the city of Jerusalem. And now in chapter 8, you would notice that is where God is leading this guy named Philip to bring that message. You know, it's so easy to follow this track of uh, the gospel message uh, that is uh, given by the Lord to the disciples. Because at that time, the church, obviously, they were concentrating on evangelizing only in Jerusalem area, solely for the Jews, you know? But from there, God has to move that message of salvation and let them be scattered throughout the world. And what preceded that? None other than persecution. And I believe persecution has its part in the history as well. And I believe right now, for me, I look at this pandemic as a form of persecution. In what way? Because this forces us to go somewhere where the people are. Why? Why do we look for people? Because right now, most people in the world are afraid. They really do not know how to respond or to react to the thought that they might catch up, you know, the virus. And from there on, their lives would probably be at risk. Wherever we go right now, no person is not afraid. And I believe this is a form of persecution that God allowed in the world. And Satan is going to, uh, to try to limit the gospel to one place and thereby be able to better combat it. He thinks the persecution will stop Christians from sharing the good news. But we believe that this is so wrong. He is, all, he is so wrong on all accounts. The Holy Spirit moves in the church to spread the gospel 
in Jesus' direction. And because Jesus said to them in, cha in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you see, he said, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And remember the Great Commission call in Matthew chapter 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey where everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Guys, my fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, you and I, we are called to share the good news, both in the pulpit and in our daily lives. Wherever you are, you are in a position that God made and He purposed. Why? Because He has told you, He has told you to bring the gospel light around. The light that you have is the same light that these people needed. The world needed that light. And Jesus gave us an investment when he said, you will be the light and the salt of the earth. And we know that light and salt are very important. Commodities, they are so common. And yet, how powerful uh, these commodities, especially when they are applied. Here, in this story, in chapter 7, it was Stephen whom God used to bring the first gospel call in Jerusalem. And it paid him dearly because it cost his life for that presentation. And now Philip is being ordered to show that preaching was not limited to strictly the 12 apostles. Note that clearly Stephen and Philip are our best illustrations and examples that the preaching of the gospel was never limited as God planned it to his original 12 apostles. You and I, we share with that kind of responsibility. Next, just in the modern church, spreading the gospel is not limited to the pastor. The gospel is not limited to the pastor. The preaching and the sharing and the spreading of the good news is never limited to church leaders, to, uh, to Bible students or Bible study leaders. Everyone in the body of Christ is asked to present the gospel. And that's why I want you to hear clearly this message. Please don't turn off your gadget. Continue to listen because there is a call for you to go out. Secondly, the church is to engage with people and bring the message of the gospel across. Here in our passage from verses 5 to 8, Philip begins the evangelization of which city? Samaria, Samaria. And as I read this account and looking at the map of this city in Samaria, perhaps my logic tells me that probably Philip started to go to Shechem. Why in that city? Because Shechem is a historical city. It's been the religious center in the city of Samaria. But uh, I also guess that he might also have gone to several other uh, major Samaritan cities. But the location of his preaching is not important here. Let me repeat. The location of his preaching is not important. What is important, it is his target audience and their response. Let us be very clear about that. It doesn't matter wherever, wherever God would bring you. What is so important when God brings you to a place, it is the audience and how they would respond to the message that you and I will bring. You know, in the story, 
the Jews hated the Samaritans. You know that. Historically, uh, most Christians have heard that kind of, of message and truth that, were, that was preached and taught many times over. And this hatred reached back for uh, thousands of years. You know, the Samaritans were despised for being unfaithful and of mixed uh, an ancestry. They were treated as being defecting hop breeds. That's how they are looked at. To eat with the Samaritan uh, was said to be like eating pork. That their daughters, uh, this is what we gain from uh, understanding, you know, the background of this, uh, uh, this history. Uh, people or the Jews regarded their daughters were unclean, you know. And they were accused of horrible crime, especially of abortion. That's how the Jews despised these people. But we know in the gospel story, it was Jesus who obviously uh, had great sympathy and love for the Samaritans. You remember the story in the gospel of John in chapter 4? You know, uh, most of the content of that chapter uh, is this story about the conversion of a Samaritan woman, not only her. If you read the whole story, you would notice that even her village, she reached out to her village and the village came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Jesus and his apostles stayed in that city for at least three days. Read that story and it will prove the point that Christ came not only for the Jews, but he also came for the non-Jews. And that includes you and me. You know, I'm a Filipino, I'm a non-Jew. But I believe God also called me for salvation. And now he is mandating me to be called to share the gospel wherever he brings me around. And also in this passage, Philip obviously has learned that the love of Christ is the one that will win the people. And I believe that's what happened in Samaria when he was there. You know, the Samaritans felt the love of Christ through Philip. And so I believe the people there saw how Philip, you know, managed himself to show the love to them, even though that there was this standing issue, a long, long issue between the Jews and the Samaritans. It was the love, the power of love of the Lord Jesus Christ that gave them an opportunity to respond to what uh, Philip had to say to them as part of the gospel call. Philip simply followed the leading of the Holy Spirit to go to Samaria and preach there. You know, I believe that Philip is not really a trained preacher, but because of the Holy Spirit that is in him, he made him a powerful person, not because he trained in a seminary or in a wonderful training uh, atmosphere. No, the power of the Holy Spirit came unto him. As a matter of fact, a very good passage in verse 8 would, uh, would give us a reading that when he left Samaria, remember, he left Samaria because the Holy Spirit is bringing him to another's to another uh, uh, a mission, to another assignment. And in verse 8, you would read this. When he left Samaria, the people are experiencing, listen to this, not plain joy. But Luke wrote this, that the people have experienced great joy. Great joy, not just plain joy. It was great joy. The only thing that uh, Luke can describe that account that after Philip left the Samaritans, the, all the Samaritans in that city, they felt and they showed great joy. How is that? 
Because that really is the impact when the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ have become personalized to anyone who would receive the message of love, of redemption, and of salvation. Today, if you have never experienced the love of God through Christ, I am challenging you because God is right here talking to you and He is willing to impart that love to you through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, I believe this part tells us that God spreads the gospel even further, you know, further than a Samaria. Because again, our main guy here, whose name is Philip, you know, from verses 46 to 40, you would notice Philip becoming obedient to the call and to the cost of the gospel. In what way? Three things. One, he positions him in places. God positions us in places. It is not an accident that you are in a particular city. For instance, I am here in Bowie. I'm here in Maryland. And my stationing in Maryland has something to do with God's positioning. Meaning to say, for God, the city of Maryland, the city of Silver Spring, the city of Bowie is his city as well. He positions me quite well. Right now, I've been here residing for the past 20 years. And I believe that God purpose wants me to fulfill that call wherein people as I meet them people as they uh, come to me he wanted me to tell them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in the story of uh, Philip in chapter 8 from Samaria would you believe he plucked out Philip and told him to go uh, in a place wherein he will be meeting another person. And guess what? He met this guy. And God guided Philip to a person. And this person is not identified by his name. Instead, he was identified by his birth. He was described as an Ethiopian. An Ethiopian. And he is a eunuch. And he is also a... Uh, of some sort he holds an office so meaning to say the way it was described that this guy this ethiopian eunuch is an important person and god positions philip in that place why because god wanted this ethiopian eunuch also to meet with christ so uh, wherever we are he is positioning us in places Secondly, in chapter 8, we, we also would notice God positions with people. You know, the people that you and I meet, they are not accidental. That's with a purpose. Whether you, meet, you met them virtually, whether you met them by phone, whether you met them through Facebook or through uh, social media or through a person-to-person -person thing, which most likely right now we avoid people simply because of the issue. But then again, God is not stopped simply because there's an, a pandemic. No, He isn't. He is not limited with that. And I believe even up until now, God positions you with people. And whoever people He positions you with, and this is most likely what would happen. Just like Philip guiding the Ethiopian eunuch to Jesus, God will use you to guide them to Jesus Christ. God will use you to guide them to Jesus Christ. How is that? Thirdly, God also positions us for a purpose. God positions us for a purpose. You would notice the meeting between the eunuch and Philip. It was a wonderful. And the Lord allowed it to happen while the eunuch was reading uh, 
the 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 book of uh, the, an Old Testament book by the prophet Isaiah, and God caused that conversation, that reading, that exposure of the scripture, to have a gospel conversation. You know, I call that a gospel convo, and a lot of things would happen. You know, whenever you meet someone with a problem, I believe that problem will be used by God to be a gospel convo. But lately, or yesterday, I found myself in a courtroom and I found a guy who is, uh, you know, who is he's a professional and for some reason, uh, he met some bad people along the way and these people caused him to commit some uh, some legal crime and he was caught and I believe that God positioned me every time I go and represent a client inside a courtroom and that is with a purpose and so I spoke with this guy after uh, the hearing yesterday and uh, I challenged him that uh, and I gave him a card then he, that he can call and I'm looking forward for that moment that God would allow me to sit with him and this time around in a different environment conducive for him to hear the message that God is preparing in my heart for him to receive in the same way you know if you read and go further, the Ethiopian went his way again, rejoicing. In the same way, the Samaritans, after Philip left them, they were in great joy. And in the same way, before the Lord took Philip away from the presence of that Ethiopian in that uh, chariot ride, the Ethiopian found himself and went on his way rejoicing. Why? Because that again is the very message that only God can bring to your soul. A great rejoicing that when you found Jesus Christ, when you come to know him, you will not just simply be happy. The word happy is an understatement and I believe there is a biblical word to describe that the word is joy it's uh over over and super 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 happy you know and that's what this group of people uh received when they re uh, when they received the gospel and when they received jesus christ in their heart and from there on it will be in Caesarea that Philip will be found some 20 years later. Actually, in Acts chapter 21, verse 8. And in that text, take a look. Philip started calling Philip the evangelist. The evangelist. But you know what? You and I, we need not be a professional evangelist to, be, to bring the gospel to anywhere God would like us to bring them but just the same there are people who are professionally uh, evangelists but there are people who are evangelists and yet they take it as part of their lifestyle <clears throat> and I bring this to a close and in my closing I would like to present uh, four items here for takeouts I call these take homes. You know, I wanted that the story, this message, will become a table subject to you and me. Okay? And the way we can bring that uh, to an arena wherein we can engage people is to give a statement. And the, here are four statements that I would like to engage uh, you in. One, we are again told to take the gospel message everywhere you go everywhere i go no matter the group that we circulate in 
we should always be prepared to give our testimony. That's a very good starting point. Tell them our testimony. And the testimony simply contains the following. One, what was your life before you found or before Christ found you? You know, we have a former lifestyle. Uh, you know, I understand that the former lifestyle of uh, the Apostle Paul is that he was an enemy of the gospel. But after being an enemy of the gospel, Christ found him. And look what happened to him. He is none other than the author of at least one third of the New Testament literature. No matter the group that you and I circulate in, we should always be prepared to give our story. Second thing about our testimony, okay? The story wherein Christ found you. There's always this story. In my case, for instance, I found the Lord. He found me, uh, I should say, in 1978. You know where he found me? In a stinky beer joint somewhere in West Avenue in Quezon City. Those people who probably know that and those people who probably knows the place, my testimony is that I was working at a beer joint at 1 a.m. It was time for me to, uh, you know, review my notes because I was a working student. I believe I was in, uh, I was a sophomore in uh, college back then when I read a booklet that contains the scripture passage. And before uh, that early morning is over, I just found myself giving my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, that's all I can remember. And it's as if whenever I remember it, it's as if it happened yesterday. I literally able to tell my story about that testimony. You know, whatever Jesus has done for you personally, you know, is always our strongest gospel message. Don't ever forget that. Whatever Christ has done for you, that is your story and it's a unique story. Not all people can share with that story. Nevertheless, bring it into the open. Let people hear your testimony. Secondly, if you are serious about, you know, evangelizing people, okay? This is a basic thing, but this is serious. Study your Bible very well. Study your Bible very well. Because the Bible is, will be the only reference you and I can use whenever we bring and uh, introduce people to Jesus Christ. Because the Bible is His Word. And whenever the Bible is quoted, there God is speaking literally, and spiritually. Okay? So if you are really serious on reaching out with people, you have to do your homework. And the homework that I'm asking you to do is become a student of the Word. Student of the Word. Thirdly, the third take home. You don't have to be Billy Graham and preach to thousands to spread the gospel to people. No, you don't have to do that. And I'm, a, I'm not asking you to become a Billy Graham. I'm no Billy Graham, but that doesn't mean I cannot preach to people. I may not be able to preach to thousands, but I believe God calls me to preach to one person at a time. And that's not a problem. In the same way, you and I might not be called, you know, the likes of this preacher, but you and I were called to preach the gospel message one person at a time. And fourthly, and this is where I would conclude, the Holy Spirit will back your efforts with His work 
to prepare hearts to receive salvation. It is not you and me who saves people. It is the Holy Spirit who is backing you up in whatever you're saying or sharing. If you are sharing your story, He is going to use your story to convict people of their sins. And if you're using His Word, His Word will also be translated the same. And this causes people to see who they are in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is the one working the salvation. But the Holy Spirit is using men and women, old and young alike, like you, like me, to bring that effort together and prepare the hearts of people to receive the gift of salvation. And this morning, I would not end my preaching without extending an invitation to every one of you. Please, if you have some questions, if you have some uh, remarks or comments about this message, please feel free to respond to, your, uh, to, to, to this message. And I promise you that I'm going to do my best to respond to you on a uh, promptly basis. So, you know, just go to our uh, Facebook page, Living Spring Community Church, and just put in your questions, your opinions, your, your, your remarks, or your comments. And I promise you, I'm going to respond to them uh, as they come. And so, I'd like to close this message uh, this morning uh, with, a, with a prayer. And my prayer is that you want the gospel call to expand, to be enlarged in your city in your area, in your family, in your community. Take the challenge. Take the challenge to spread the gospel. But for those who needed the gospel, let me pray for you. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have listened for the first time. The challenge that they too needed to receive the gospel through the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you died for our sins. You died for every man, women, children, old and young alike, for all our sins. Lord, and that's a fact, we were born sinners because we inherited the sins of our great, great, great uh, ancestors, Adam and Eve. They were the first ones who have sinned. And so their fruits and the people that followed them were born sinners. And today, Lord, no matter what religious affiliation we are from, we are not able to cleanse our sins. We are not able to be freed from our sins because it is not religion that can cleanse us. It is not the name of a spiritual leader that can cleanse us, except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'm praying on behalf of the people who needs to be cleansed by their sins and who needs to be saved and be part of your kingdom. And after being a part of your kingdom, they can also take part in the kingdom call to spread the gospel. But first, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the challenge to you. And you will be saved, you and your household. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, you will be saved. And just like the promise of God, you and also the people in your family will be saved. The second part of my prayer, Father, are those who are already uh, saved, Christians, born again. They're following you, except that they don't have 
uh, that joy to go out and share their testimony so that they can invite people to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Their lives, perhaps, Lord, are not seen with uh, a blessing. Perhaps they are still living in sin. And I'm challenging them, Lord, because the call is for the church to rise above our situation. Because it's time for the church to expand left and right, up and down. And this morning, I am challenging my fellow brothers and sisters to be serious and to take the gospel call right now. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may He, may he make uh, wings and your feet so swift to bring the message of the gospel to every man and woman. Either they are in your office, in your classroom, in your family, uh, within uh, the neighbor, within the block of your community. I pray Bring your story, how your story have brought peace because you have found Jesus Christ as well or Jesus have found you as well. That is more than enough. And God is going to raise His modern day armies because of this expansion thing. And I pray God and I rebuke the spirit of fear and the spirit of pride that is cutting the churches, dividing the churches, Lord. I pray they be gone in Jesus' name. They be gone in Jesus' name. I also pray for my fellow pastors and church leaders to come all on board. Lord, destroy any division that is eating us up in Jesus' name. Let us all come on board in this call. Because everyone is now being called to expand. And there's no amount of pride and of fear that can bring this into past. Except, let's bring this to the feet of the Lord. And cry out for our sins and repent from it. For this is the message call. I pray for all of you who are listening under the sound of this voice. May God bless you. May God richly use you to bring the message of the gospel clearly, powerfully, followed by signs and wonders. For I believe Philip did that because he is being backed up by the Holy Spirit who is the author of every supernatural event that ever happened to mankind. Only Him can create this. And because of that, you are going to use the power that you have given us and the authority, the authority that tags along with our deep relationship with our Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying. And thank you for accepting uh, the prayer. And I congratulate to those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. You are now a member of Christ's body as well. Now, uh, for further announcement, and uh, I'm giving it now to our media people because they're going, you're going to see them in the presentation. God bless you all. Good morning. Again, this is Ernie Bartolome signing off straight from Bowie in Maryland. See you again. God willing, this coming Sunday. Bye.
tuning in at Living Spring Community Church. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you.